Hi, everyone. Hi, guys. It's lovely to see you again. Um, we wanted to just chat today about uh, a house that is probably, I would say, one of our mutual favourites of all of the all of the houses. I don't like calling them houses, but brands, you know, they are. <laughs> inspirations. Yeah. They are how they yeah, are yeah. perfume houses. Um, <laughs> and this is the wonderful Papillon with Liz Moore's. Yeah. Uh, and something that we, we've always been eagerly awaiting is one of her releases. And we have another one today. Which is it, Dan? Bell 125. So it's not actually... Yes. So we're recording this in whatever it is, March. It's not actually going to be released until July. It's going to be... No, it's her, long time. It's her seventh fragrance. And so she's releasing it on the 7th of uh, the 7th. Um, and it's been... When was Bangal Rouge? Will, that will have been two years, won't it? Two years ago, yeah. I think since her last... And review. So yeah, as you said, you know, Liz Moores is a perfumer who we've always, um, you know, got our noses and eyes and ears already out to to, to see what she's yeah. uh, she's up to. And this this is one uh, she, you know, if you follow her on Instagram, she gave away kind of a few clues, a little little teasers. And I wasn't sure quite what to expect. So as our resident Egyptian, Joe <laughs> is obviously well acquainted with Spell One Hundred and Twenty Five. Indeed. Well, this is so. This is um, this is this was about um, crossing into the afterlife, for, you know, um, crossing the underworld to reach the afterworld, you know, the afterlife in yeah, in the so in the, the sort of in the grand tradition of of Orpheus. It's but it's through, the, through the ancient Egyptian prison. It's the longest um, spell from the, the the book of the dead, mm. and and as you say, it's 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 kind of reaching that, that crossroads. It's a kind of judgment to decide your fate. Um, and you know, if you just do a little bit of googling this, if you've only kind of seen one image of Egyptian mythology, you might recognise this one of um, Osiris um, weighing the heart of a, of someone who's hoping to cross to the afterlife to decide whether it's lighter than a feather. And if it's lighter than a feather, he will um, progress via. He's got his various trials with Osiris and Anubis, um, and if he's successful, he will uh, progress. Progress. To heaven. I have so a bottle coming... of Anubis up on the shelf there, by the way. I... Well, that's what I was going to say. I forgot we've, to mention that. Yeah, we've kind of come um, full cycle, haven't we? Because Anubis is one of her first releases. Is that right? Yeah, I, I want to say that it was it was along with Zalame and no, no, it was Tobacco Rose, Anubis, and Dryad. Maybe Possibly. I can't remember which ones, but it, it's definitely one of the earlier releases, and it's absolutely stunning. And it's one of my um, favorites. Yeah, it's amazing stuff. This I think is a very, very, very different fragrance to Anubis. I would say. Yeah, it's but it's it's got a hint of something in there as well, though. Yeah. The, the little whispers. Little whispers. It's like a distant but, cousin, maybe. I mean, all, all in all, like we we had a bit of a chat before this video, and I and I, I this is this is quite different to. Uh, to, to any of Liz's uh, fragrances, which which I've smelt um, before, it's interesting watching. As I said, the way uh, she she takes a lot of photos uh, from Instagram about uh, you know her perfume products and, and about her life, and she certainly paints this image of. It's a term she uses herself, um, so I hope it's not derogatory, but witch. She refers to herself as a witch, kind of down there in the New Forest, and she's always out in the woods, and she's surrounded by these animals. She's got these beautiful owls. Um, and I, I'm sorry, but witch always sounds so derogatory. If I said wizard, you would think it's okay, but maybe kind of like alchemist is is, is a better yeah. term. But you, but, you know, some somebody um, kind of conjuring up um, olfactory uh, magic and it was interesting to see yeah, this title really spell 125, which is from the book of the dead. And on just some of the notes list, as she revealed, she had black hemlock as well as one of the ingredients. So that automatically kind of, now, what does that even smell like? I've never smelled black hemlock, but just the, the word hemlock. I, I, th I think most people won't know what it smells like, but will know that it's, you know, a poison associated with death. Yeah. Um, so anyway, that's, um, so, we don't know how much it's going to cost yet, but I think all of her fragrances are between about 120 and 140 pounds for yeah. 50 mil EDP. And she prices, they're all priced differently according to ingredients. Um, I think this has probably got some expensive ingredients in it. 
Uh, yeah. The, like the incense and the amber green is quite expensive. So it may be on the upper end, but I don't know. We, we will see. But she's still so fair with her pricing. I, like I, I would yeah. happily part with my money for any of her, any of her things. I, I mean, I have three. Yeah. And I, I didn't hesitate with any of them because they're, they're worth every penny. So let's, I mean, we, we've had these, uh, Liz <laughs> very kindly sent us these little samples and one each as well. Thanks, Liz. Obviously we, we can't be in the loft. And this That's is very one thoughtful. we've both spent some time with and I'm <laughs> glad because it, uh, I don't know about you, Joe, I found it a little bit difficult to get my head around this one. It's not an obvious fragrance, I don't think. The first, yeah, the first couple of, of goes. I mean, I loved it. I have to say, I did love it from the first time I smelt it, but I think I loved it because I was intrigued and I, I loved it because... Mm. Like I was, I was half expecting a big bombastic thing and it just isn't, it's far more, it's far more inviting and seductive. And I think it hovers in the, between think, darkness yeah. and light. It sort of plays with, it plays with both. And I think at any one time it can, it can lean in whichever direction you want it to. It's, I didn't, it's I very didn't, clever. I think it's, I agree with all of those. Maybe the word seductive, it's so many of her fragrances are sexy. This does, um, seduce you but not in a romantic way in more no, no, no. kind of intriguing kind of, yeah yeah like it kind of takes you over for me i think this is a fragrance that's all about this boswellia sacra this um amani green frankincense um and again we were talking a, a, a bit before that often when we think of an incense note or accordion perfume if you think the kind of mock buxton or comme de garçon um, or Bertrand de Chauffeur, those kind of bright, sparkling, in-your-face um, incense, or even maybe an aldehydic incense. This is not mm. that. This smells, if you smell kind of a frankincense special oil, essential oil, especially this green sacra um, incense, it's it's very different, isn't it? It's not sparkle. Yeah. It's, it's, it's something which just engulfs you um, and draws you in. It's got... It's got it's got a it's got a sort of a smokiness, but it doesn't have it does it like it doesn't have that thing which I actually don't like in a lot of incense fragrances, which is this big this kind of big iso y super y dry wood fake yeah. dry woody thing. Yeah, I, yeah. And it just doesn't have that. It feels so natural and it feels it feel it just feels sparkling. It feels kind of silvery. Like, you know, it's I think it's got it's, a bit of resinous quality, but it's lots of flecks of light going through it's it more, well. it's, To me, it's more like a silver sheet rather than sparkle. I mean, I have to say it's interesting. The first, when you first put it on, I do get, there's quite a lot of kind of sweetness. And when I first sprayed it, I thought, oh yeah, I can see where this is going. There's a bit of incense. There's a bit of kind of slightly amber sweetness. I was almost, I was reminded quite a lot of Le de Desert Marocain when I first put it on. I, I really got that association, but it, that isn't what this is actually. I was kind of um, wrong-footed a bit. It kind of it starts as a kind of warm, uh, slightly kind of cuddly, uh, ambered incense, but then I it goes into this very different, more bitter, slightly green direction. Do you think? Yeah, absolutely. A little bit more, a little bit more foresty as well. It takes mm. incense away from from sort of Catholic cathedrals and it. It gives it a slightly more outdoors feel, which is interesting for an incense, I think. But the thing is, at the, at the beginning, I, when I got this kind of incense with this slightly um, sweet warmness, I thought, oh, yes, I see where we are. We are in the desert. We are, we are taken back um, to, the, you know, to the land of spices. Um, I can see where this is going. and see what's going to happen. And then, as you say, it goes, I get this um, bitter green, almost slightly mossy. I definitely got... A suggestion of ivy sometimes as well. Yeah, I can see what you mean. I mean, I don't know what hemlock uh, smells like, um, but I got, I've certainly written down, you know, I've been making notes, I always kind of make notes, and they're sometimes quite rambling. I sometimes just write down thoughts. And one of the things I put is ivy climbing a cold stone wall. And, and I came back to that and I kind of circled it again because I definitely, mm. there is a stage midway through this when I, I i feel it becomes very austere yeah you know which there's a coldness to it isn't there mm. it's definitely I can't this is, it. it's um compared to her last release bengal rouge which was such a, a, a you know this kind of friendly cuddle uh, this warm embrace 
a little bit sexy. This for me is the opposite. It's yeah. um, it's almost a bit scary at times. But I think that's the subject as well, though. You know, if yeah, yeah. if you're talking about these these trials and crossing from from darkness to light, it's mm. like it's it's meant to be a bit troubling. I think. Yeah, and there are there are bits which are mm. cozy and familiar and happy and you know you know good <laughs> in a kind of moral way and then there are other things which you you kind of get this impression of walking down a dark maybe this is his name but this dark stone hallway with and i and i think of like you know aged ivy kind of like interfering with the stonework and it's cr crumbled away and i almost get there's almost a hint of kind of chalkiness, not iris at all, or nothing, nothing like that. But I just, I, I keep coming back to this all this kind of wood, um, stone or a cave. I think it's maybe the, yeah. the, 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 the effect ambergris has here. Um, it maybe con contributes to some of that warmth, but, but later on, you kind of get this dry, almost saltiness, not quite, but this kind of, yeah, this kind of dry, arid quality which is maybe what the ambergris is doing to everything yeah i mean it's also like it, it's not ambergris sort of in the middle of a huge structure of really of really dense resinous materials so i, th I think the ambergris is is playing is playing a kind of more slightly more prominent note than maybe we think mm. i think i think it, it, it's giving this sort of salty damp unnerving quality i don't know how i mean i, I really don't know how the other thing I have to say, I mean, the more I smell it, go on. Sorry. No, no, no. You go. I was just going to say, the the more I smell it, the more I do just get a distant relation to Anubis. There's some I don't know what it is, but there's something in here that I also gravitate to in Anubis, mm. and I don't know what it is. I should have done a side by side to try and and see if I could identify it. It's a different fragrance for sure, but there is there's there's something in here which is the DNA. Mm. And I don't know but, what it is. I, I, hope, she, I hope Liz will be able to. But she may have even planted. She may have even taken a bit of Anubis, like as a you know a small accord, as in like a body that is present within this fragrance. Do you know? You see what I mean? So yeah. This Anubis in its entirety features as a small accord. I um, wonder if it's if it's yeah if it's a thing because it it just it feels it feels mm. like it's part of that family. I mean, obviously, as a concept, it's related, of, of course. But it's, uh, in terms of actual perfume, I don't know. It just in terms of tone, this is so different to anything I kind of experienced from from Liz before, because you know she does these big, raunchy, sexy, bombastic, theatrical. Whereas this is this feels much more thoughtful and much yeah. uh, less obvious in a way. You still get the kind of complexity and the richness. I mean, we should also say it's it's not a big big fragrance at all you know no no i don't really care that, that much about performance but if you want to know in terms of siage and, and bang for your buck it's not enormous but i think it's a much more thoughtful fragrance anyway i don't think it's supposed to be like that it's a it's definitely a fragrance to the year we've been through i know that sounds kind of corny yeah yeah but it, yeah. it is a more reflective yeah. it's a reflective slightly more personal slightly more private yeah sort yeah. of thing I mean, isn't it, it? Hundred percent. I mean, the the other one. It's I'm, really I'm, stunning. The other fragrance that came to mind, not that it this doesn't smell like it, but tonally, I find it really similar. Um, is I don't know if you've smelt it yet. Is is Thebes um, by Sultan Pasha, which is his slight homage to Jedi by no. Gerna. Again, which is like I mean, that's very different. It's a kind of orisy thing, floral, but it is it's so kind of austere and miserable. And uh, this has got more kind of brightness and happiness, but that, that was just the one I was, when this fragrance is at its yeah. most austere, this is the, the one I was reminded of. But oh. it's quite nice though, because it, it, it does feel, it does feel like perfume doing what perfume should do, which is to kind of evoke a feeling and a mood. It's not, you know, how mm. often do we, do we smell things and go, Oh, that's amazing. It's really rich and the oud and the blah. Yeah. And I love, you know, I love the way it does this, but actually how often do we, talk about a perfume just transporting you to yeah. another place you know it doesn't have to be a happy place or a big yeah, boisterous something like place it can be somewhere that you just want to be alone yeah like, you know it's that it's in a way it's a similar kind of feel 
Uh, well, not not quite, but that's that's more kind of melancholy and sadness, I think. But you know that, that it, yeah, it's an amazing story. And yet, this is not, you know, we're not. It's not like an imaginary author's kind of wacky, like. Um, it's, it doesn't smell like a weird fragrance. It smells like a, a very sophisticated, elegant fragrance. I think. Yeah, it's very, very classically done. Yeah, that's what I, I love about Lismore's is that mm. everything is done like with such finesse and such respect for the tradition, but still being new at the same time. I mean, this is this is proper classical perfumery. I mean, so my much only point was it is that we only had these little things, and I really wanted to just you know, marinate myself in it just to feel what it was like yeah. to be. I think that does make a difference, you know, to, to the yeah. performance and to the, and to the overall thing, because it, the way it oxygenates when you get a proper atomizer, it will be, it will be different for sure. And it's, it's, it's interesting as well that it's going to be released in the middle of July, 7th of July. So quite warm. I mean, this, I mean, I guess, you, you know, you're, we're, we're thinking, Egypt, you know, pr pretty kind of toasty, I guess. But this doesn't oh, yeah. seem an, an obvious hot weather fragrance. But maybe I'm completely wrong. And it'd be so interesting to see how it uh, mm. lives or dies. I I think it could work really well. I think I think that saltiness, you know, on a, on a hot sweaty day, but never veering into like sweet cloying territory. Just that that kind of salty green herbaceousness i think will really shine on hot on hot weather in hot weather i don't know yeah. why I, I just i think i think it's, but i mean regardless i'd wear that any time of year i have to say yeah i want to wear it it's it's really addictive yeah <laughs> i think i can't stop smelling the strip it took me you know quite a few wears to try and start to get my head around it. i think as you can tell like we you know i think there's more to find here yeah um it's just it's just interesting and it's just not kind of what I expected from from Liz Moore's really. Um but in a good way. Yeah, totally. And she's she's clearly just trying stuff and and not you know, she's not sort of she's not backing herself into a corner. Yeah. I think that's the thing. She's not backing herself into a corner and saying, right. I have to do the following styles of fragrance because that's what people expect. Yeah. You know, to be able to, to be able to do this, but do Zalame and Bank do Rouge. Like Dryad Bank and Bangalore. Yeah. yeah like. That's, I mean, that, that for me is what genius perfume making is all about. Amazing. I really want to that wear it more now. But <laughs> I really absolute, want to wear it. Absolute standards. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so thank you to Liz for sending yeah. it. Um, it's a shame. We've got to wait. Uh, whatever it is, four months, ages, ah! and to smell it again. <laughs> but hopefully by then we'll be back to normal as well. So yes. we can actually pass people in the in the street and hug them just so they can smell it and say, what do you think? That might be a bit creepy, but <laughs> yeah. who cares? Yeah. Anyway, awesome stuff. Um, so I guess we can't ask you what you think because, you know, most people haven't smelled it yet. So um, I guess that's it really. Until July. Until July. Until next time. Bye. Be sniffing.